Hi everybody, I'm Lenina, um, and I wanted to focus um, this particular presentation on leadership development um, because I think that the Center for Story-Based Strategy has invested a lot in Right to the City um, and also in the folks and our in, in, in our leaders, um, the community leaders and the members of our organizations um, and myself to just really give us this framework that we can use um, in our campaign strategy and our organizing. So I'm using an owl here to represent the idea that there has been a growing wisdom that we've developed um, in this partnership with the Center for Story-Based Strategy. First slide. So we started our partnership in 2011 with the Center for Story-Based Strategy, and it was around building for um, an urban congress that we had in Boston. And the Center for Story-Based Strategy helped us with narrative messaging and pitching strategy. At the time, Right to the City did not have um, a communications director or someone to bottom line that. So they actually kind of came in and helped almost like a press firm would help or, or something like that. So they provided capacity support um, at the time. And they helped to rebrand um, the Alliance and the Alliance's frame. Um, right to the City came together as an organization in 2007 because a lot of people were dealing with issues of gentrification and trying to think of what kind of strategies can we develop to fight that collectively on a national <coughs> level and scale. Um, but we, they needed a frame and, and the idea of just sustainable and democratic cities came about and smart, excuse me, Center for Story-Based Strategy, I wanted to say smart, <laughs> um, helped us to figure out how to really promote that vision of just sustainable and democratic cities. Um, and also at the time, the Occupy movement was extremely strong. So we were thinking about how do we bring a racial justice lens to this, um, a lens around gender and economic justice that was really reflective of our communities. Next slide. So this is an example of the Urban Congress, one of the workshops. This is Rishia Aratrami from um, Virginia New Majority doing a workshop on civic engagement at the Boston Congress. Next slide. Um, and also, so we developed an ongoing partnership and went into the idea of narrative development um, around Boston, right? So thinking about what are the issues, particularly in Boston, um, and how can the, the city unite around um, their issues? So 10 of our local Boston groups were trained in the Center for Story-Based Strategies um, framework and we're reviewing what their culture and history as a city was and how that, what that had to do with their campaign strategy. Um, so this is one of the activities that was done in terms of using collage and images and words to frame the Boston of their desires. The next phase of our partnership with the Center for Story-Based Strategy was working with a large alliance called um, the Unity Alliance, um, which is an alliance that incorporates uh, National Day Labor Organizing Network, National Domestic Workers Alliance, Jobs with Justice, Right to the City. Um, and we were looking for a frame around how to target Bank of America um, that was responsible for many, many of the, of the crises around foreclosure in the US and um, we were trying to look for a meme, and so Center for Story-Based Strategy helped us to develop this meme, and also it's helped us to define what America was for us. And a focus group at the advanced training chose the idea of having a boxing match um, to represent this meme in a visual way and a national action we were gonna do. Um, so there was about two to 3,000 people at this action, and it was the shareholder meeting for Bank of America. So this is a poster from the, um, from the action that was kind of foreshadowing what was going to happen and getting people hyped up for this idea that there was gonna be this fight. Um, and so here you have this, the kind of America that we're trying to represent and we call them the People Power 99 versus Brian Big Banks Moynihan, um, who's the CEO of Bank of America. Next slide. Um, so, because I was coming out of the advanced training and we had written a, this script in the advanced training, we created this kind of comeback story, um, sort of a hero's journey, right? And, and in the fight, you know, I, I, he, he beats me down and I go totally down and then I come back 
and punch him out and you know the crowd roars wildly. <laughs> um, and so this picture actually got circulated all over the world. It, uh, there was over 930 stories um, that day and it was the most popular story in the press um, right after Obama's announcement on, on um, how he felt about uh, gay marriage. So the last campaign that we worked with um, with uh, Center for Story-Based Strategy was a campaign called Homes for All. Um, and that's the campaign that Right to the City is currently engaged in and involved with. Um, what we needed to happen with this campaign, or what we're trying to do right now, is really create a unified vision um, that can be shared amongst various sectors. So that's homeless people, public housing residents, homeowners, um, tenants, right? So those four sectors, and, and, and it's been very difficult because everyone is sort of siloed off fighting their own issues. Um, but in order for us to really fight gentrification in a unified way, we had to create a unified narrative. So one of our strategies was to use the framework of abundance. Um, and so the idea of, I believe in homes for all, um, or homes for all came to mind in the sense of thinking that there are all of these vacancies in these cities. Um, there, are, there is housing for people. Um, and so therefore, we believe that there are homes for all, as opposed to taking a defensive strategy of, you know, there, is, there are no homes and we need homes, et cetera. Um, so this is in Boston, um, and so this is one of the um, actions that happened. Um, we had a launch of the Homes for All campaign where there were actions in 11 cities, mostly um, focused in, in cities that were dealing with, or areas of the city that were dealing with displacement and gentrification. So this was in Chinatown, um, and it was a rally of, of tenants in Chinatown that were fighting displacement. Um, and so a, a big part of our campaign was to develop all of these stories and accumulate stories from across the country from all of the different sectors, public housing, homeless, tenants, et cetera. Um, this particular story here, Roberto Mojica's story, comes from um, a Tumblr site where we're hosting a lot of these stories that we hope to eventually um, evolve into sort of a more, uh, a stronger, um, more searchable website. But right now, it's on, these stories are on a Tumblr site, and um, I'll just read this to you quickly. Home from work, hungry and tired. I walked through the Wyvernward Garden Apartments on my way to a neighbor's home for a Comité de la Esperanza, Committee of Hope meeting. My story isn't unique. It repeats itself through my community of Wyvernward. Stories of hardworking, low-income immigrant families in search of a better life are abundant. A better future like we envisioned when we first came, when we first arrived to a rent control department in Wyvernwood, a place where open grass reminds us of the pueblos we came from. All the memories I have of being a child in Mexico and raising a family in Wyvernwood are what drives my commitment to fight. Um, so again, this is the story of, of a tenant who is right now in an 8,000 um, unit which apartment unit um, called Wyvernwood, which exists in Los Angeles and is at threat of demolition. Um, and, and so the, the tenants are united around fighting that in their local community. Next slide. So one of our lessons from um, the Center for Story-Based Strategy is this idea of the point of intervention. Um, and so what that means is that, you know, we have to have demonstrations in places where um, we have the, the most level of, of access to the public um, and, a, and a really strong level of conflict so, so that they can resonate with the audience. And so here, this is a hearing um, where Edward DeMarco, who is the head of the Federal Housing Finance Agency, he's the director, um, he's speaking, um, just kind of defending the work of the Federal Housing Finance Agency and our members mobilized to get behind him and get into the C-SPAN the cameras um, to be able to put out their message that he should be gotten rid of and that, um, that he's not in support of principal reduction, which would be loan forgiveness for many people who are, are dealing with um, housing debt. Next slide. I, mean, I love this picture because I really feel like it embodies what we're trying to build 
which um, is a unified frame and, and, um, and, and a reconnection to the principles of Right to the City. Um, when Right to the City fights for housing, we're not just talking about housing, we're also talking about land and land rights and people's rights to reclaim, remain, and rebuild. Um, and so, you know, the idea of like having Aztec dancers represented um, in this struggle, this is also in Wyvern Word with the tenants um, and putting out our message of reclaiming, remaining, and rebuilding in our cities. Um, again, all about abundance and, and looking forward for the vision that we want. Um, this is the kind of uh, messaging that we feel will really project our vision. So this last slide um, is in Springfield, Massachusetts, and it's from an organization called Springfield No One Leaves. And I think that why it's inspiring is that we did not um, train any of these young people in messaging strategy or story-based strategy, but through the, the involvement of the um, organizers and the staff from the different groups who were trained in those things and, that, and, and were able to relay the message around reclaiming and remaining and rebuilding their communities, um, they went and went to a, an area in Springfield where there was a lot of vacant homes and properties and they took it upon themselves to clean up the neighborhood so much so that as they were cleaning the entire neighborhood got engaged and the Department of Sanitation came and helped uh, to, to finally clean and take that responsibility on. Um, and so they were very excited about this action, the ability to use the story and the frame in their work concretely. Um, and that's the last slide, right? Okay. So, I mean, I think the last thing I just wanted to say was that um, the, the right wing puts millions of dollars into this type of, um, this type of transforming of the narrative, and I really feel like um, the, le the left and liberal sectors in our society need to make an equal, if not larger, investment um, because it really helps to, to change the narrative, to fight the battle of the ideas, which in many ways helps to concretely help us win policy, gain exposure, and then at the same time um, create the world we want to live in. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you.